Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to take on a couple two column proofs and talk about parallel planes. All right, I have to confess that I did say in the previous video on the lesson that we were going to uh, handle the practice problems and the lesson in the same video, but at the end of the lesson, I realized that I wanted to chunk it into two separate pieces. So I apologize for that if you were expecting the practice problems in the prior video. Well, let's move on. All right, so two problems. First one, I have uh, two planes, M and N, which are parallel to each other. And I have two lines, AB and CD, which are also parallel to each other. And I want to prove that AB is congruent to CD. Okay, so let's go through the proof. All right, so I have M is parallel to N, and that's given. AB is parallel to CD, uh, and that's given as well. So line AB is parallel to CD. Now, I can say that AB and CD determine plane ABCD because if I have two parallel lines, they determine a plane. So remember, we recall from, I believe it was chapter 6.1 when we talked about how to determine a plane. And one way to determine a plane is if I have two parallel lines. So two parallel lines determine a plane ABCD. Now I can say that AC is parallel to BD because if a plane intersects two parallel planes, the lines of intersection are also going to be parallel. And we talked about that in the properties of uh, parallel planes. And then finally, I can say that ABCD is a parallelogram. And this comes from chapter five, because if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then by definition, I have a parallelogram. All right, moving on to the next problem. I'm given, this is problem number nine in your book, if I am given that plane F is parallel to plane G, so the two black, uh, what looks like rhombuses almost, or, or at least uh, parallelograms, plane F is parallel to plane G, RTW, triangle RTW is an isosceles triangle with the base TW. I want to prove that RSV is isosceles. All right, so we go to the proof. Well, I know that RT and W are three non-collinear points, and I can assume that from the diagram. So RT and W determine a plane. Now I know from, again, the prior sections that three, in addition to two parallel lines determining a plane, I can say that three non-collinear points determine a plane as well. So RT, W determine a plane. I can say that plane F is parallel to G, that was already given. And I can say that SV is parallel to TW, and it stems from the same uh, reason that I gave in the prior example, because if a plane intersects two parallel planes, then the lines of intersection are also parallel. So that's number four. So I have SV and TW that are parallel to each other. So we'll just mark that up. SV and TW are going to be parallel to each other. And I write this mark up here. So SV and TW are parallel to each other. And I can say that RTW is isosceles with base TW, and that was given uh, so I write given as a reason. And then angle T is congruent with angle W. I know that if the sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are also congruent. So I have angle T congruent with angle W. So I'll mark that up. I have angle T and angle W that are congruent. Well, I also know that angle RSV is going to be congruent with RVS. Because if there are parallel lines, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So RSV is congruent with RVS. And now I can say, I'm sorry, RSV is congruent with angle T, and RVS is congruent with angle W. Excuse me, those are the two sets of corresponding angles. Now I can say that angle RSV and RVS are congruent. Because if angles are congruent to congruent angles, so if I have RSV congruent to angle T and RVS congruent to angle W, and I know that angle T is congruent with angle W, then I can say angle RSV is congruent with RVS. I know that's a mouthful, uh, but again, if I have two angles that are congruent to congruent angles, and those two angles are congruent to themselves, so RSV now and RVS are congruent to each other, now I can say that segment SR, so we're on number nine, segment SR or RS is congruent with segment RV because if angles are congruent in a triangle, the sides opposite them are also congruent. Now that RS and RV are congruent, I can say that RSV is isosceles 
by the def definition of isosceles triangle, which says that if in a triangle I have at least two of the sides that are congruent, then I have an isosceles triangle.